In this video, I want to provide an introduction to causal inference in the realms of econometrics. So the idea is that a lot of studies, what they aim for is a description of a particular phenomena. So we sort of label these studies as being descriptive. And so an example of these types of studies might be that are increases in the inflation rate, are they associated with declines in the growth rate of GDP, for example. And importantly, this isn't looking for causation. It's not the fact that increases in the inflation rate have actually caused a decline in GDP. It's just that there is an association, a correlation between these two particular variables. And that might be very useful. It might be very useful for macroeconomists trying to understand whether the current sort of situation with high levels of inflation is likely going to be associated with declines in the GDP rate in the future, for example. Another example of a descriptive situation would be saying, do, let's say, weather forecast predictions of the sort of temperature rate, how well do they actually correlate with the true temperature? So if the temperature which is predicted in the weather forecast is high, how well correlated is that with the true temperature? And Obviously, in this situation, this isn't causative. It's not the fact that the weather forecast causes the weather. It's purely a descriptive um, situation here. But nevertheless, it is useful. It's useful for us in an everyday life, right? Because what we do is we say that, well, the weather forecast is generally quite highly correlated with the actual true temperature. And we can use that to dress adequately, take an umbrella with us, etc. So descriptive studies are certainly useful. But what is much more useful is understanding the causal nature of things. So I'll explain exactly what I mean by that. So an example might be, do increases in the number of years of education, does that cause an increase in the wage rate? So in other words, you can sort of imagine a alternative reality where someone spends an extra year in education opposed to this world, and you can imagine what effect that might have had on wage. And I'm saying that this is exactly causal now. And the fact that it's actually a causal mechanism is a lot more useful than descriptive situations, because now what we have is we have a much better sort of understanding of a model of the world. And what we can do is we can imagine what effect, for example, policy changes might have on a variable we're interested in. So we might be interested in what the effect of declines in the cost of university would have on the number of years of education, and then the knock-on effect that would have on wage. Another area of interest might be saying, well, what is the effect of a nation becoming democratic on the GDP growth rate within that particular nation? In other words, does a transformation of a nation from autocracy to democracy, does that tend to be, or does that tend to cause rather, increases in the GDP growth rate? And that's probably of quite significant interest now to a number of states which are now in this sort of transitory stage. Do we necessarily expect that this is going to cause them to grow faster in the future? And notice that this is much stronger than just saying that it's associated with increases in the GDP growth rate. Because we know perhaps the causal structure, that allows us to make predictions which are outside of our current sample. Essentially, the causal mechanism provides us with a kind of model of the world, whereas descriptive is purely really statistical. So a model is much more useful than a statistical description of a situation because it allows us to envision what would happen in different situations a lot better than a statistical model would, for example. In the next few videos, I'm going to be providing a description of what it actually means for a process to be causal in the realm of econometrics.